The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. At 50, I'm not a bit of 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 L-S-M-F-T. Of course. You said it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. For it takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And year after year, at auction after auction, the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, a few days ago, President Truman took the controls off meat, which of course included ham. And here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, how could you possibly introduce me, a suave, dynamic, sophisticated comedian, that way? Well, Jack, I thought it was good. Good. Think, Donzie, think. I mean, a little of you must be brain. You can't be all blubber. (laughs) Concentrate. Jack, I saw nothing wrong with the way Don introduced you. I thought it was timely. I know, but it was so Fred Allen-ish. I mean, he always starts out on a topical thing and then beats it to death. I'll show you what I mean. Go ahead, Mary. You be Portland. Oh, Jack. No, no, Mary. Go ahead. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Oh, Mr. Allen! Mr. Allen! Well, Portland, (laughs) gee whiz, what's new? I see by the papers that President Truman took the controls off meat. Yes, I know, Portland, and things certainly have happened fast. Controls were off meat on Monday, and on Tuesday, St. Louis slaughtered Boston. (laughs) (laughs) Papa says he hasn't seen so much meat be controlled since Mama split her girdle. (laughs) They stopped after the wrong word, you know. know. know That's what I mean, Mary, and I don't want to—I don't want to catch anybody doing jokes like that on this program. You're right, Jackson. The meat shortage is a serious thing. You're not kidding. Yeah, if people can't get meat, they'll take all of the grain and then start making foolish things like bread, and then there'll be a liquor shortage. <laughs> liquor? Yeah, that's the stuff that keeps you pickled in the middle with the ice bag on top. <laughs> Oh, oh, Harris, they ought to put a hole in your head so people could see what's going on in there. You've got a hole in your head. Just pull the cork out. <laughs> and cut out that silly stuff. Oh, leave him alone, Jack. I think he's cute. Well, I don't. I do. Well, I... <laughs> Dennis, where did you come from? That's what I asked my mother, but she said my father will explain it to me. <laughs> Dennis, sit down. The state line ran right through the hospital. (laughs) I said, sit down. Oh, well, to each his own. And now, to each his own? What's that? I don't know. It gets laughs on other shows. (laughs) Well, I don't want laughs on this one. It spoils the mood. And believe me, we just had five minutes of mood. We have not. The people out there laughed as hard as they could. Just like it said on their tickets. <laughs> anyway, that's radio for you. You say to each his own and it gets a big laugh. Gee, I remember when I was in vaudeville and things weren't that easy. Gee, I used to have to go out there with sock material. When I had the audience where I wanted them, I sang two hot choruses of my Mary Oldsmobile and killed them. I used to look pretty good in those goggles and dusters. So <laughs> I was the biggest hit in show business. Wait a minute, Jackson. How about Al Jolson? 
What was so wonderful about Jolson? He used to come out on the stage and go through his act down on one knee. Some trick. I did my act on one knee long before Jolson ever thought of it. He was singing. You were ducking. <laughs> he was singing. I was ducking. He was singing. I was ducking. This is where to each his own fits. <laughs> Mary, if you keep making cracks like that, you're not going to come to my house for dinner tonight, and you'll be the only one missing. What are we going to have, Jack? Well, we're... Oh, my goodness, I forgot to tell Rochester to dress the turkey and chill the wine. Hey, Jackson, are we going to have wine? Sauternly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Betty, stand still for a while. They'll probably want to take pictures. <laughs> Oh, that was a good one. In my Mary Oldsmobile. What a car with my sweetheart. Mary! <laughs> I told you if you... Oh, yes, I was going to call Rochester. Operator. Operator. St. Mabel, what is it, Gertrude? Mr. Benny's line is flashing. Oh, yeah, I wonder what little Beaver wants now. <laughs> I'll insert the plug and see. Hello? Uh, operator, will you please get me my home? Uh, just a minute, Mr. Benny, I'll try. Mabel, have you been listening to Mr. Benny's program this season? Yeah, and as far as I'm concerned, South America can take him away. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Mabel flaps at him. <laughs> How can you say that? I think Jack Benny is wonderful. Well, look, Gertrude, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. That's why they have a horse of another color. <laughs> yeah. You want to like Jack Benny? That's your prerogative. <laughs> like him? I'm crazy about him. Every time he says hello again, I'm lousy with goose pimples. <laughs> Sometimes I don't smoothen out till Monday. <laughs> He just happens to affect you that way. Me, he doesn't send. Oh, Mabel. <laughs> Mabel, you're just jealous because Mr. Benny went out with... Oh, gee, I promise not to tell. Oh, come on, Gertrude. I always tell you everything. Okay, you talk me into it. <laughs> this summer, I went out with Mr. Benny, and he made such love to me, I almost fainted. Why, Gertrude, gear shift. <laughs> No, honest Mabel, it's the truth. He told me I had hair like spun silk, eyes like limpet pools, a complexion like rose petals, and ears like little seashells. Gee, what did he say about your teeth? Nothing. I would forget them on a night like that. <laughs> I don't know, but every time you always... Operator. Operator. I'm sorry, but the phone at your house is busy. Oh, well, try it again later, will you? Come on, Dennis, let's have your song. Gave the world. 
singing a song sung by Dennis Day, and very good, Dennis. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Very good, Dennis. Very good, Dennis. You always say the same thing. Why don't you tell me I'm terrible sometimes? <laughs> All right. All right, you were terrible. You're just mad because I sing good every week. <laughs> oh, be quiet, will you? What do you want? And now, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we really have a surprise for you. For our feature attraction tonight, we're going to do our version of that thrilling, spine-tingling mystery series, The Whistler. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who are you? I am The Whistler, and I walk by night. I influence the lives of innocent people. And sometimes I even drive them to murder. Well, I'm certainly glad you dropped in because tonight you can help me with the sketch we're going to do. Jack, Jack, who are you talking to? That man, that man right there. What man? I don't see anybody. That man right there was whistling. Whistling? I didn't hear anybody, Jackson. Are you kids crazy? I'm telling you, there was a man standing right there at that microphone. Dennis, you saw him, didn't you? Yeah. He was a kind of a mysterious-looking fellow with a brown suit, penetrating eyes, and a scowl on his face. That's right, that's right. And what was he whistling? To each his own. <laughs> he was not. It was the Whistler's theme song. Oh, Jack, what's the matter with you? You didn't see anybody, and neither did Dennis. Well, I... Yeah, I, I thought I did. Maybe it's because I've got my mind all wrapped up in the play we're going to do. Now, Mary... In this... Excuse me a minute. Hello? Oh, Mr. Benny, I've been trying to get you home, but your line is still busy. Uh, thank you, Gertrude. Uh, keep trying, will you? I will. And, uh, uh, Mr. Benny. What is it, Gertrude? Say it for me, will you? Huh? You know, say it once more, please. Oh, I don't want to. Oh, come on, please. Just once. Oh, all right. Hello again. <laughs> Darn it, she fainted again. Oh, Gertrude, Gertrude, Gertrude. Uh, this is Mabel. Oh, did Gertrude hurt herself? No, luckily the goose pimples broke her fall. <laughs> good, good. Gee, she faints all the time. This Christmas, I'll have to give her some smelling salts. <laughs> yeah, then you can stop carrying that water pistol. Yeah. Now, kids, in the play that we're going to do tonight, Mary oh, is going... Oh, Jack, before you go into the play, we have to do the commercial. Oh, yes, yes, Don. I'm glad you reminded me. I have the quartet right here. Well, all right, but they're going to have to do what I wrote. No more of that silly stuff. As long as I have to pay them $500 a week, I'm going to write their stuff myself. Now, look, boys. <laughs> You're going to cut that out, too. Jack, I know you're the bus, but if you think you can write better than Nelsie Ash... Wait a minute, Nelsie the Ash, music teacher, well, that's up to you. Don, I'm the boss. You're the bus. <laughs> the bus. What'd you say, Don? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Well, I said, I said as long as you're the boss and you think it's, that you can write as good as Nelson Eddy, music teacher, why, that's just up to you. Don, I don't care what... 
Wait a minute. Nelson Eddy's music teacher? Yes, he's been training the quartet all week, and Jack, you'll simply love what they've prepared. Well, if a music teacher... Well, that, that sounds a little better, Don. Now, we're getting someplace. Sit down, kids. This should be all right. Quiet, everybody. Go ahead, Don. Let's hear it. Okay, ready, fellas? Give me that introduction. Hmm. Well. L.S., M.F.T., L.S., M.F.T., Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Wait a minute. Light up an L. An L. Light up an S. I'm the bus. Thank goodness. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don. 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 Don, I want to... Have, have you gone entirely crazy? I mean, is this what they've been practicing all week? But, Jack, that was shortening bread. I don't care if it was apple pan dowdy. Get those guys out of here. <laughs> now, I've had enough of this. Come on, fellas. Out. 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 And stay out. Mm. <laughs> what a broadcast. What a program. All I have is trouble, trouble, trouble. I'll bet it'll be just as bad on the repeat show, too. Oh, quiet. <laughs> now, come on, kids. Let's, let's get on with the play. Take it, boys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we now offer our version of that blood-curdling, thrilling murder mystery, The Whistler. The fiddler. <laughs> yes, I am the fiddler. I play by night. They won't let me play in the daytime. <laughs> I know many strange things. I influence the lives of innocent people. You don't believe me? Let me take you to the home of Mr. and Mrs. Park, Gwendolyn and Griffith. <laughs> As we look in on them, it is morning and they are having breakfast. They are happy, but not for long. <laughs> for I... And the fit. Gosh, Gwendolyn, this looks like a wonderful breakfast. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Griff, because I have a surprise for you. My mother's coming to live with us. Oh, bully, that's wonderful. <laughs> See, they're happy, but I'll change that. Gwendolyn, when is your dear darling mother coming? Tomorrow. I'm glad you told me in time. Now I can buy her a present. I wonder what I should give her. Why don't you give her a kick in the teeth? <laughs> no, Gwendolyn. Your father gave her that last year. Uh, what did you say, dear? I just answered your question. But I didn't say anything. Oh, I thought you did. <laughs> you see? I've got them confused already. Well, I better finish my breakfast. Yes, here's a great big bowl of cereal. Wait, I'll pour the cream on it for you. <laughs> you can take 
take your fingers out of your ears now. They've stopped crackling. <laughs> now eat your cereal. Okay. <laughs> Gee, that was a stubborn little one, wasn't it? <laughs> It certainly was, darling. Darling, darling. Come on, come on, hit her with something. I've got other homes to break up. What did you say, Griffith? I didn't say anything. My mouth was full of the breakfast of champions. <laughs> oh, yes, that's why you're so strong and powerful and masculine and... Stop looking around, I'm talking to you. Gee, thanks. Well, I better finish my breakfast and hurry to the office. Give me a couple of eggs, dear, and some bacon. About 12 slices of bacon. Yes, dear. <laughs> yes, I am the fit. I know many strange things. I even know where they got the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Griffith is at his office while his wife, Gwen, is at home waiting for her sweetheart, the Iceman. <laughs> and now look, look down the path. The Iceman cometh. Yes, the Iceman cometh. Won't you come up with me to Alabama? Let's go see my dear old... Uh, shut up! I'm <laughs> Now knock on the door. She's waiting for you. Hello, baby. Hello, Kilroy. <laughs> Wait a minute, I gotta get rid of this ice. Mm, just give me a kiss and I'll melt it for you. <laughs> Come on. Gee, I wonder what your husband would say if he caught you kissing me, his best friend. Oh, I tell you, you're congratulating me on my birthday. But you've told him that 28 times this year. Ain't he getting wise? No, but he's getting mad buying me all those presents. <laughs> Gee, Kilroy, you and I could be so happy together if it wasn't for my husband. Ah, now you're on the right track. Well... Go ahead. Why don't you kill your husband? Kilroy, I just got an idea. So did I. Let's, Let's kill, kill Griffith. Griffith. It must be love. We said it together. That's it. That's it. Now we're getting somewhere. Go ahead. Go ahead. Kill him. Gwendolyn, I know just how to kill your husband. We'll take him down to the Union Station and throw him under the wheels of a passing train. But at Union Station, all those people will see us. Oh, what? They'll think it's a stunt for truth or consequences. <laughs> You can get away with it, and you'll get a box of does besides. <laughs> no. No, Kilroy, I have a better way. When he comes home, you hide in the closet, and when he hangs up his coat, you can strangle him, and no one will ever know. No one will ever know, except me. <laughs> For I am the fit. Now it's evening. The office is closed. And Griffith, the unsuspecting husband, is walking home without a care on his mind. Gee, it'll be nice to get home to my loving wife, Gwendolyn. I feel sorry for her. She's alone all day. Are you sure she's alone? Yeah, of course. About twice a week, our best friend Kilroy drops in, but that's only on her birthday. <laughs> her birthday? Yeah, I'm three, three presents behind this month already. What's the matter with me? I'm acting silly, talking to myself. Lots of men talk to themselves when their wives are in love with another man. And Kilroy was there. Ah, uh, she can't be in love with Kilroy. After all, when we were married, he was our best man. Yes, and after the ceremony, your wife kissed him, remember? But all brides kiss the best man after the wedding. For three and a half hours? <laughs> <laughs> It was either that or take him on the honeymoon. <laughs> Gee, what's wrong with me? The way I keep talking to myself. Anyway, I know that my wife doesn't see Kilroy anymore. Oh, she doesn't, eh? Then hurry home. You'll find them together. All right, I'll go home and see for myself. Gee, I better be prepared. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
see what I mean? Here are three innocent people, and I have planted the seeds of suspicion and hate, which will soon grow into murder. Ain't I a stinker? <laughs> oh, well, to each his own. <laughs> Darling, you're home early. Step aside, woman. I'm going to search this house. Aha! Look on the carpet. Footprints. Big footprints made by size 12 shoes. Darling, why didn't you tell me? Your mother is here. Her mother isn't here, you little fool. Those are Kilroy's footprints. Her mother wears size 14. Now, don't waste time. Ask her about Kilroy. Go on, ask her about Kilroy. Huh? Oh, yes. Darling, was Joe here? Not Joe, that was yesterday. It's Kilroy's day, and Wednesday is Bing's day. Now, come on, Griffiths, come on. You've got to get murdered. Go on, go on, open that closet door. No, no, I don't want to. I'm afraid. Come on, don't waste time. Open that closet door. No, no. All right, then, I'll open it for you. Now, sit tight, folks. This is going to be gruesome. All right, Griffith. Prepare to meet your doom. I'm going to open that door now. Mammy's little pappy loves him, let's tell, 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 let's